prognosis in coronary heart disease may actually be inversely related to obesity, thus the obesity paradox. It's a fascinating topic. Now, when we talk about obesity, usually we talk about the BMI. There actually may be another approach, and that's what I'm here to talk with Dr. Carl Levy, Medical Director of Cardiac Rehabilitation and Prevention, the John Oshner Heart and Vascular Institute in New Orleans, also known as CHIP. So thank you very much, because you're the guy on this particular topic, and Thanks, we're talking Jay. about a, a jack paper. Now, what are you looking at, because it's not BMI? Yeah, well, we, were, we were measuring body composition, and the typical way people talk about obesity and overweightness is body mass index. but that doesn't always reflect true body fatness and give a good picture of, of the fatness versus the muscle mass. And an example of what I'm talking about is the middle linebackers in the NFL. They would be, have BMIs that would give them, uh, sh suggest they are obese. Right. And obviously they're not obese. And, and although BMI is quite good in the general public, we thought that there might be some information that would get that would be very helpful by basically dividing body mass index into two parts, the fat part and the lean part, and assessing these uh, independent uh, body composition parameters and prognosis in a, in a group of patients with coronary heart disease. And what did you find? Well, we, we studied 570 patients with coronary disease following major events, and we found that both higher body fat and higher lean mass both predicted independently better survival. In fact, a group of patients who had both a high lean mass index and those who had also a high body fat, and we define body fat as, as a high body fat as over 25% in men and over 35% in women, that group only had a 2% three-year mortality, whereas the group who had both a low lean mass and a low body fat had a 15% three-year mortality, seven times higher. And the group who had one or the other, a high lean mass but not a high body fat, or a high body fat not a high lean mass, they had intermediate mortality. But both independently predicted mortality. In fact, a, a higher lean mass predicted a 3.1 to 3.9-fold lower mortality, independent of the other factors. And a higher body fat uh, was associated with a 2.6-fold um, lower mortality during three years in these coronary heart disease patients. So suggesting that both of them play an independent role. Now, the body fat is something that you would think would be bad. Right. And, uh, you know, so that's part, that is, goes along with the, with the paradox. The lean mass, on the other hand, is what you'd expect. You'd expect a higher lean mass would be associated with a better prognosis. And it is in, in, in coronary disease uh, patients. And so, so the combination of both higher fat and lean mass uh, really protected the, uh, the, the coronary patient. In a Mayo Clinic Proceedings paper the year before, we showed that the group who had the, both a low body mass index and the low body fat was really the only group that had the high mortality, and all the other groups had a, uh, had a low mortality. So here we show not just body mass index and body fat, but we actually sh divided the body mass index into uh, the fat and the, and the lean components. Obviously, you need to measure these patients. Is there actually something where you can look at them? What do they look like if they have both of these? Well, in a way, which it's a big person. Um, but it's not a big person just like a middle linebacker in the NFL. It's a big person who also looks like they have some muscle mass. You know, so and that's, that's opposed to somebody who's just a big ball of fat. You know, somebody who's uh, got, you know, right. is big and is really just all fat and very little muscle. And the vice versa, someone could have both low muscle and, and low body fat. And obviously there's people that are, that are in between. But from a, uh, from a coronary disease prognosis standpoint, um, it appears that those who have both a high body fat and, and lean mass have the best prognosis. Now, you would expect that, that, you know, we know that obesity is a risk factor for developing almost every form of heart disease. And so clearly, overweight and obese patients get way more coronary disease. And the, probably the reasons for that is that the overweightness and obesity causes the metabolic syndrome and diabetes and the dyslipidemia and the hypertension, left ventricular hypertrophy, all that then add together and make them at higher risk of developing heart disease like coronary disease in the first place. 
And so that makes sense that they get more coronary disease. Yet when you look at a group that already has coronary disease, and we've published the same in heart failure, and other people have published the same in hypertension and atrial fibrillation, peripheral arterial disease, the overweight and obese are actually having a better prognosis. And that's what's been the hard part to, to explain, because actually, if you look at them on paper, the leaner patient with coronary disease looks like they would do better because they, they have less hypertension, less diabetes, Correct. they have lower triglycerides, higher HDL, less systemic inflammation with C-reactive proteins. So all of that should predict a better prognosis, yet they're having a worse prognosis. And that's the, the part of the paradox. And a decade ago, we had trouble getting papers published about that because nobody believed it. Exactly. But, but now it's been published in so many studies and even large meta-analyses. And for coronary disease, for example, one of my friends, Abel Romero Corral, uh, published a paper in 2006, Lancet, reviewing 40 studies of over 200,000 patients with coronary disease and showing the, the, a pretty strong obesity paradox where the overweight and at least mildly obese right. did better than, uh, than the normal weight patients. That's why when I started, I said, to a degree, this obesity paradox exists. So what you're actually saying is that there is a possibility to be fit and fat. That's, that's, that's correct, and, and, and actually, that's, a, that's another important component. We, we showed in our paper in Jack in the October 9th issue that we actually measured peak VO2 and, and showed that even independent of peak VO2, um, that, that there was still this obesity paradox with both lean mass index and body fat. But there have been several papers, and we published one in the May issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings of over 10,000 patients from the Aerobic Center Longitudinal Study. And actually, Steve Blair is pretty famous for, for the fitness-fatness uh, yep. uh, relationship, and, 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 and he's shown many times that, that it, obviously it's best to be fit and lean, mm -hmm. but if you're going to give up one, you, you'd be better to be fat and not lose your fitness because fitness seems to predict prognosis uh, even, even more so than, uh, than, than fatness. And in fact, fitness seems to protect people with many disease, cardiac diseases. This is true in metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and patients with various forms of, of, of cardiac coronary disease. And as I said, in, the, in our May issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings, in t over 10,000 coronary disease patients, we showed that the obesity paradox was only present in those with low fitness. The, but those with low fitness had way higher cardiovascular deaths and mortality during follow-up. And, and the, those who were fit had a low risk, and they didn't have an obesity paradox. Yet the, the, the low fit patients had the obesity paradox, and they had it not just for uh, BMI, but they had it for percent body fat, like we, we're showing in our Ashna data, and they even had it for central obesity. Even with central obesity, those who had high fitness didn't have, uh, have an obesity paradox, whereas, whereas for, uh, for low fitness, they, they, they did show the paradox. So in the low fit patients, those who had the, uh, the greatest waist, the, the waist circumferences uh, actually did better than those who had the lowest uh, waist circumferences. I think the also good thing about this is people who are obese sometimes get very discouraged. And this argues that just because you can't lose the obesity and it's really hard, you should still try to get fit. I think Even with the obesity. I, 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 I totally agree, Rick. And so what this would really support, one is that in a way, this is as much a lean paradox as it is an obesity paradox. And we actually wrote That's that true. in our Mayo Clinic Proceeding 2011 paper. We said, is this an obesity or a lean paradox? Because it really seems that it's not that the obese are doing so good. It's, just, it's what's a surprise is that the lean patients with coronary disease are doing the poorest. And it might be some selection uh, bias. It might be the fact that, that you know, the obese patient may not have gotten coronary disease in the first place if they had not gained all the weight in adult, right. adult life and then developed all the risk factors that led to their coronary disease to begin with, whereas the young patient who develops the same disease does so for a different reason. It's probably genetic predisposition, and, and, and in that ge genetic predisposition, they're probably prone to a worse prognosis. But still, for the obese patient, I think we can encourage them that they're, they're, it's not doomsday for them, that they can have a good prognosis and they can improve their prognosis more if they increase their fitness 
and if they increase their lean mass, and basically the two go hand in hand because the way you get a high lean mass is one uh, is to be genetically prone to just having higher muscle mass, but the other way you get a, a higher lean mass is typically with exercise training and, and especially res some resistance training right. or weightlifting, and the way you get a higher level of fitness is usually with cardio uh, respiratory exercise uh, or aerobic exercise training. Well, this is always a fascinating topic, and, and Dr. Levy and colleagues are probably some of the best people you could go to for the information. The paper in Jack, I didn't give you the title, Body Composition and Survival in Stable Coronary Heart Disease, Impact of Lean Mass Index and Body Fat in the Obesity Paradox, and that is in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. I'm Rick McGuire. <laughs>